Good morning, Uptown Kiddos. How are you today? Hey, thank you so much for joining us online. Hopefully, we will only have a little bit longer before we're actually getting to see each other at church. We're missing you so much. Today is going to be an awesome day. All right, so I have a question for you this morning. What do you want to be when you grow up? Okay, I'm sure there's tons of answers right now. Maybe it's being a doctor, maybe it's being an athlete. There's a lot of choices. Today, our message is gonna be about growing up. But we're gonna be talking about growing up, not just from a baby, but actually to grow up spiritually. And how can we do that? We can read our Bible, pray, or even worship. But that's doing it without being asked. So let's learn about that today. So really quickly, let's go over our values and then we'll jump into the message. All right, so value number one is love God. Value number two, love people. Value number three, do your best and say it loud. Value number four, have fun. All right, let's jump into our message. What's up everybody, my name's Kirk, this is Connect. I'm super excited that you're here. I have a question for you. Which exercises can you do with your eyes closed? I can run in place. I can do jumping jacks. And I didn't fall over. Huh, I hope you can do some too. At Connect HQ, the crew loves to help each other, but sometimes you still have to step up and take responsibility on your own. Our point reminds us of that. I'm gonna say it. I need you to repeat it after me. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. No more baby stuff. It's time to grow up. Fantastic job. All right, now we're going to worship. So let's go to Connect HQ to learn more. This is my favorite part of Connect. Connecting to God through music. Worshiping God is making a big deal out of who He is and all He's done. And I love to connect to God through music. And you know, just dancing around in this body God's given me, like this. Especially here at church with all of my friends. So come on, sing, dance, worship. Get up on your feet and let's connect to God together.
Greater is, greater is he. and I'm stuffed. <laughs> Whoa, did I do that? I guess a 30 course meal racks up some dishes. Well, I'm a responsible guy and I know exactly what to do in this situation. There, and I didn't knock over a single one. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Dot, and this is how we learn to take care of ourselves. Sean! Sean! Sorry, Dot, but you gotta be careful, because I was in the zone, and when I'm in the zone, there's no non-zone that I'm not zoning about. Know what I mean? Not really, but I need your help. Awesome! Helping makes me happy, because I'm happy to help. What's up? Well, you know that exercise chart that you gave me that tells me what exercises to do? Yes, great chart, great exercises. Put them together, you got yourself a great exercise chart. Yeah, but here's the thing. I lost it, and now I don't know what exercises to do. Can you make me another one? You've had that chart for weeks. I'm sure you know all the exercises by heart by now. I need that chart, man, to tell me what to do. I'll help you look for it. <gasps> but first, we got a message from one of our field offices. It's a message from our field office in Dallas, Texas. Let's see what they say. Hey, Connect HQ. This is Carl from the field office in Dallas. I'm here with Sally, who was wondering if we could help her out. Hi, Connect HQ. I've been a Christian for about a year now, and it's been great. 
Just about every night, my mom would read my Bible to me, teaching me all the different stories and what they mean. It was a lot of fun. But now, my mom says that I should read my Bible all on my own. What if I don't know what to read? What if I don't understand it? I'm not sure what I should do. Can you help us out, Connect HQ? Sally raises some good questions. Mm, yeah, like how's she gonna air punch her way out of this one? So to speak. It seems like she's waiting for someone else like her mom to tell her what is right. Like what she should do, when she should do it, and how she should do it? This sounds familiar. Like your chart problem? No. It reminds me of something from the Bible. There's something in 1 Corinthians that talks about this kind of thing. Take a look. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. Is alive. First Oh, that's so cute. Look at the little baby tweaking its little baby bottle. Yep, babies are cute, all right. But you're not a baby. What's with the baby talk? It's funny. Baby want a bottle. Acting like a baby is only cute when you are a baby. Would it really be cute for a big kid to need a bottle? No, I'm too big for that. Right. Once you've learned how to feed yourself, you're too big to drink from a bottle anymore. You're ready for solid foods. Okay, I get the point. But what's this got to do with the Bible? We are talking about the Bible. The New Testament uses the example of a baby to teach us about growing up. Why would the Bible teach about growing up? Getting bigger happens to everyone. We learn to walk and talk. We learn to feed ourselves. When we decide to follow Jesus, it's like we are starting over as babies, no matter how old we are. The Bible calls it being born again. But I don't want to be a baby again. I'm already a big kid. Well, when we feed our bodies healthy food, our bodies grow bigger. But our reborn spirits need to grow up too. But what do you feed your heart? What makes our spirit grow up? We help our spirits grow by feeding ourselves the Bible. God's Word is like food for our hearts. We learn about the Bible at church a lot. Does that feed my heart? Yes. But just like a kid who grows up, eventually you need to start feeding yourself. You can't just wait for someone to feed it to you. I can feed the Bible to my heart. The more mature your faith in Jesus gets, the more you'll be able to understand and use what you learn to live a stronger life. Like going from milk to sandwiches. And once you figure out how to feed yourself, another important part of being grown up comes next. Like what? Cutting your own steak? <laughs> well, think about it. Grown-ups have to take care of babies and feed them, right? When your spirit is strong and healthy, you can help others grow by teaching them. But I'm still a kid. No matter how old your body is, your spirit inside you can grow strong. You can help other people's spirits grow up too. Even grown-ups can learn from kids. Then I'm going to drop all the baby stuff. I want to grow up and be strong for God. Sally's heart is growing. When she was a baby Christian, her mom helped her take care of herself, just like she helped her learn how to eat solid food when she needed to eat more than just milk. And when Sally learns to read the Bible on her own and feed her own spirit, she can help others grow too. We can find the links to encourage her that taking care of herself is a good thing. Like how about this for a point? No more baby stuff. It's time to grow up. I love it. Since we're going to answer Sally's question in no time, how about we take a moment and look for that exercise chart? I need it to tell me what to do. Uh, God. <sighs> Man, for a place of business that is not a restaurant, we sure do have a lot of dishes. There, finally done. 
<laughs> Did you do all my dishes? Wow, thank you. Wait, 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 these were all yours? <laughs> yeah, and that's not even all of them. Did you check the drawer? That was breakfast. Okay. It took a lot of effort to get all that like in there. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it it's very difficult. I do not like any of those books. Huh. Okay. Hey, I was wondering if these went right. <laughs> oh. That's a that's a long story. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna need you to clean. I need you to clean all this stuff up. I did. That's why I put it in the drawer. No, no, no. That's that's hiding it. I need you to clean it. Oh, uh, I get it. You're you're right. You're right. You're right. Now, um, that's what. What. Well, if it's not in here, I don't know where it could be. Dot, I don't think you need that chart. Why don't you show me what you remember? Okay. I'm not even sure what that move is. I call it Dot Without a Chart. Think about Sally's problem. She thinks she needs her mom to read the Bible to her, right? Yeah, I remember. Just like you think you need the chart to help you exercise? It reminds me of the verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 13. Say it with me like this. Hebrews 5, 13. Hebrews 5, 13. Someone who lives on milk is still an infant. Someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. And doesn't know how to do what is right. At first, you needed the exercise chart to tell you what to do, just like Sally needed her mom to read the Bible to her. But just like how Sally should be able to read the Bible on her own, you should be able to exercise on your own. Now I get it. So let's see some exercising. How about a jumping jack? Okay. Yeah, you got it. I know you got it. There you go. Go, go, go. Now some air punches. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. No more baby stuff. It's time to grow up. I don't need the chart. We don't need that chart. <sighs> Mike, I think you have a problem with having to be told what to do. No, I don't. I love being told what to do. No, see, that's the problem, is these are your dishes, so you should do them without having been asked. So I should do what I know I shouldn't do? No, 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 don't do that. So you're telling me what to do? Yeah, well, uh, no, 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 I just, I, I, I don't know, um, maybe Dot can help. I'm just here for some water. I've been working out without a chart. Oh, well, um, Mike and I are just discussing the importance of doing the right thing without having to be asked. That's an important part of growing up. Whether it's cleaning up a mess you made or spending time with God. As you grow up, you take care of yourself. You don't wait to be asked. Oh, okay, I get it. I was ignoring doing the dishes because I was waiting to be told what to do. I'm, I'm sorry that I made you clean my dishes, but don't worry. From here on out, I'll take care of it. Well, hey, it's an important reminder for us all because I know I leave my dirty coffee mugs lying around sometimes. Hey! Who found the toilet seat rope? We just got a message from Connect HQ. Let's see what it says. Hi, Sally. My name is Dot. I work with Connect HQ, and we found an answer to your questions. The Bible tells us this in the book of Hebrews. Say it with me like this. Hebrews 5.13 Someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. When you first started following Jesus, you were like a baby. You needed someone to tell you what to do and how to do it. The Bible talks about spiritual milk and spiritual meat. At first, we rely on our parents or church leaders to help us follow Jesus and read the Bible. 
But as you continue to grow and learn, you should be able to take care of yourself and switch to spiritual meat. This means that you spend time with God and try to live like Jesus without anyone telling you to do so. And that includes reading your Bible. Cleaning up your messes and taking care of yourself are just two ways you can grow up. But as you mature, how can you grow stronger in your faith? Look for many ways to switch from spiritual milk to spiritual meat. The more you learn, the more you can help others grow too. No more baby stuff, it's time to grow up. Thanks Sally for your thoughtful questions. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Spiritual meat? I've never thought of it that way. Thanks Connect HQ. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, I think I got it, let me try. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. You're a natural. <laughs> See, as you grow, you can help others learn too. She is a great teacher. Pretty soon, I'll have one of those nifty microphones. Whoa! Maybe. Wearing an exercise microphone requires years of training. Couldn't I just buy one? Well, all right, let's punch that air! Left, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, in the zone now! <laughs> Cleaning dishes isn't so bad. Mm, nope. It can be nice to be told how to do something, especially when we're just starting out. Choosing to follow Jesus is the same way. When we're new followers, we need help. But as we grow, we learn to follow Jesus all on our own. Maybe today is your starting day. If you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, you can make that decision right now. All you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. And if you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect small group leader before you leave. That is the most important decision that you can make. If you want to know more about that, I want you to talk to a trusted adult before we finish today. All right, we have a verse that we need to say together. Here we go. Hebrews 5.13. Someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Great job. So when you choose to follow Jesus, your heart becomes a baby heart all over again. You need people to tell you how to live for Jesus. That's spiritual milk. If you choose to live for Jesus without being told what to do and show others how to live for Jesus, that's spiritual meat. So here's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna say some things that are either spiritual meat or spiritual milk. If it's meat, pretend to eat some delicious chicken nuggets. Just like that. If it's milk, you're gonna cry like a baby and pretend to drink a bottle. <laughs> Just like that. Okay, got it? Here we go. Others pray for you, but you don't pray by yourself. Is that meat or milk? <laughs> That's spiritual milk. Here's the next one. Obey before someone needs to remind you. That's spiritual meat, of course. Here's the next one. Teach God's truth from the Bible to others. Meat or milk? That's spiritual meat. Here's the next one. Only worship God at church. <laughs> That's spiritual milk, of course. All right, here's the next one. Give more than a tithe, that's called an offering, of your money to God, church, and people in need. Is that spiritual milk or spiritual meat? That's spiritual meat. Great job, you guys did a fantastic job. So if you notice you're still drinking a lot of spiritual milk, Ask God what you can do to start eating more spiritual meat. 
He will help you grow spiritually. Thank you so much for joining me in Connect today. We have some awesome questions for you and your family to talk about. I will see you later. Later.